Arcage Unchained is a game that is quite confusing to learn and I know that there is a lot of times that I've sat and thought what what does that mean that doesn't make any sense and I've just wished that there was someone that I could ask and they'll be able to explain absolutely everything for me. In this video I'm going to go over loads of different tips that I wish I knew when I was leveling up in Arcage and also I'm going to go over things that confused me as I was leveling up as well and this way I'm hoping that I can help you guys out and make sense of quite a few things in this game. Now this video is going to be pretty long as I'm going to be going into depth and explaining things in a way that hopefully will make a lot more sense for you guys. So I'm going to put timestamps in the description. If you are looking for a specific thing, for example how labour works or if you are just wondering exactly how gearing up works or what Mirage Isles is, then you are going to be able to scroll down into the description and just go straight to that section. You don't have to watch the full video. If you are sort of looking and just want to find out loads about the game, then definitely do stick around and watch the whole thing. But I really just want this video to help you guys out as much as possible and answer as many questions that you may have as possible as well. So. If this video does help you out, make sure you like and subscribe, guys. A lot of time went into this, and I do hope that it does help you out. So, let's jump into these tips, and starting off with leveling up in our cage. The first thing that you're probably going to want to know, once you've made your character and are in the game, is how to progress my character, and what should you be doing to level up. So to get from 1 to 30 the main quest has a massive experience boost to get you from 1 to 30 fairly quickly so you're going to want to take those quests and ignore the side quests until you are level 30. However there is going to be a couple of quests that you are going to want to pick up on the way. This is going to be your mount quest to help you get around the map a hell of a lot quicker. The second quest that you're going to want to pick up other than the main quest is going to be your glider quest. This will make travelling around a lot easier as well and your glider is quite an important piece of equipment to use while you are on your adventure. However, other than these two, you could want to pick up your battle pet, but I will go over that later in the video where to find those at. But your main focus is going to be on this main story quest to get yourself to level 30 as quick as possible. Once you have reached level 30, then you are going to start taking the side quest, being the yellow exclamation marks on the map. A good way to find all the quests is going to be going into your options, going to game info, scrolling right down to the bottom and the last option on here is the quest display on the map. If you drag that up to unlimited, everything on the zone that you are in for a side quest will be displayed there for you. The default option for this is set so that you have to be fairly close to someone who wants to give you a quest for it to display on the map. So setting it like this allows you to find quests really, really easily. You are going to want to follow the yellow side quests and the main quest line up until about level 45 or 50. At this point you do get sort of like an option to go to the Aegis Isles. Now the Aegis Isles has really high level mobs on there so you do end up getting in a group with people and killing these off for quite decent experience rates. To get here you can either get a player to teleport you there with a world gate or you could do what I did and get on a boat and row your way out there with my little rowboat taking the risk that I didn't get stung by jellyfish or eaten alive by some deadly fish. The only other thing for me to mention on questing and levelling up is going to be at level 30 you are going to unlock your blue salt brotherhood questline. This is shown as a green leaf. You are going to want to start this in Halcyona. This is going to give you your first farm, your 8x8 farm and also take you along a proficiency line, for example alchemy and it will teach you sort of the basics of crafting and it will give you a lot bigger understanding of how all the crafting and stuff does work. If you pay attention to the quest line, it does pay off. Just to quickly recap that guys, so that is going to be from 1 to 30 following your main quest, picking up your glider and your mount and from there on taking your side quests following your Blue Salt Brotherhoods and your main quest going all the way from level 45 to 50 before joining the Aegis Isles. So the next thing that I just wanted to talk about was how the map works and just quickly touch over it. I know it's fairly simple but there's a few little things that you could sort of get confused on and understanding the map is going to be fairly important. So just press M to open your map and then it'll bring you into the zone and the town area that you are in. So if you want to right click off of that, it'll take you to the province that you are in. And then right click again and it'll take you to the actual world map. And you'll see there's the three different provinces on here. Now obviously you will be on whichever side or the race that you're on if you are just dying. If you have travelled across then you probably understand how the map works anyway. But on this screen here, if you then left click on whichever province you want to look at, so left click onto that and you'll get all the different sort of zones on there and it'll tell you the levels that's recommended for that zone. If you then click on the one that you want to go and look at, 
you'll then see it brings up all the icons on there and all the quests and all that sort of stuff in that area. Now, a useful thing to know for this, and the thing that I wanted to mention the most, was on the right hand side you have this key here, and it says show icons. A useful thing to do is if you're looking for a specific thing, once you've zoomed in all the way, you'll notice that you can't always see everything on here. But a good way to sort of figure out where stuff is, as you see it's all clumped up, is click on what you want to find. So if you're looking for a merchant, you drop that bar down. Look for a potions merchant, for example. If you tick that and untick it, you'll see on the map the potions icon is flashing as you click it. And it just sort of draws your attention to where it is. You can spot things a lot easier if you want to find the general merchant. You can see there where exactly it is. Then you can take your mouse, shift and left click, put your marker on it. And then if you look on the actual main screen now, you can see exactly where that needs to go. And you can head there and find stuff very easily. A very important but confusing part of Arcage is going to be the labour system. Now this confused me and I messed myself up quite a bit by wasting a lot of labour and not using it correctly. But labour is incredibly important in this game. It gives you access to your money, gives you access to crafting and it gives you access to gaining anything such as ships or housing or farms. All that sort of stuff. Everything uses labour and you are going to have to learn how to manage this correctly and what's best to invest it in. So I will go over the labour now and talk about things that I learned as I was levelling up just to sort of help you guys out understanding it a little bit more and hopefully you won't make the mistakes that I did. So the first thing that you are going to want to know about labour is it's on the bottom left hand corner of your screen. So that's just the first thing, knowing where it is and seeing exactly how much you've got. It caps at 5,000 and once it is capped you are technically wasting labour as you can't regenerate it anymore. It does regenerate over time and it does this faster when you are logged in but it still does it when you are logged out at half the rate as well. So don't worry if you do need to log off if you only play a couple of hours a day. You still will be gaining labour while you are logged off ready to use when you come back. Now like I say the labour system is incredibly daunting. You feel like ah I'm wasting labour I'm not getting gold. You'll see people talking about it constantly and constantly on the chat. You'll see it in YouTube videos. People mention how important it is. That's because it really is quite important and you do use it for a hell of a lot of stuff. Don't let the fact that you're sitting on labour panic you too much when you're between like level 1 and 30 because you are going to be spending that fairly shortly and eventually you are going to be sat there thinking oh I wish I had more labour to spend. While you are leveling, what I would recommend you do is spend your labour on gathering materials such as mining and cutting down trees while you are travelling around following your main story quest from 1 till 30. When you reach level 30 is when you're going to be able to spend some real labour properly, but it's all going to depend on your playstyle. So if you are playing a lot every day, say like 6 to 8 hours, then you are going to be able to manage it quite a bit more. As you are online, you're going to be generating more and you are going to be able to sort of progress more to see where you're going to spend it. If you are a casual player and you are playing maybe like 2 to 4 hours a day, then you are going to be using this and wanting to spend it not letting it cap. It won't cap probably if you are playing more than four hours a day I would say. But if you are only playing say two, one or two hours a day then it's probably going to cap. And spending this at your Scarecrow Garden which you will get from the Blue Salt Brotherhood questline. You can spend it on tax certificates and you will be able to drain that fairly quick so it's not capping and you're constantly regenerating. Spending your labour on this isn't the most efficient way to do it, but if it is capped, you don't want it to stay there. Spend it on these, cover your taxes for your land, and also it'll give you a hell of a lot of experience to level you up as well. Now, the reason I mentioned all that at the first before telling you what you should be spending your labour on is because I know while you are levelling up, it's going to be on your mind, worrying that you're not spending it and that it's all capped. And I just wanted to let you guys know that once you do reach level 30, you are going to be able to start managing it a lot better. So, the mistakes that I made was spending it all on my Scarecrow Garden, having none left every time I logged off, and then when I finally came to wanting to make a farm cart, or wanting to craft anything, turning ores into ingots, then I didn't have enough labour to do so, so I couldn't even make myself sort of like a, a pack to take a stone pack to my house to build that up, or take it to make a ship or anything like that. You do need labour to do things like making a ship, making your farm cart, and you are going to sort of struggle on getting all that back, because you are going to spend a lot on processing all the materials, and then also building it all up. So what I would recommend doing is spending your labour just enough that it's not capping until you understand what you want to spend it on. You are going to use labour to upgrade your gear and to open coin purses for gold and for just gathering, crafting, absolutely everything. So to spend just enough so that when you do know what you want to use that labour for it is there to be accessed but you're also not letting it cap and wasting any sort of regen on that whatsoever. The reason that I say to you guys to do mining and cut down trees 
while you are traveling is you are always always going to need lumber and you're going to want to try and get the rare ores from mining while you're doing it anyway and if you're just doing this as you're traveling your labor is still going to regenerate and you're not going to be at the some point where you need to go and spend hours spending all your labor on mining one day hoping to get an ore and then you're also spending all your labor on cutting down logs and then being sat there for a day or two waiting for that to regenerate so to quickly recap that whole big discussion on that basically save your labor up but don't let it cap spend it so that it's regenerating but save it until you know what you want to spend it on so if you want to make a ship then you're going to need enough labor to make the lumber packs the materials and make all the ores into ingots if that's how you're doing it so you're going to need a big chunk of labor to do that but when you get to the end of it you get a ship whereas if you've just blown all your labor on scarecrow gardens and then you decide oh i want to make a ship you're going to be waiting a few days for that labor to come back you're going to be struggling to get the materials together and you're just going to have a bad experience altogether all around the same for this applies to if you want to upgrade your gear you spend a lot of labor on that as well you don't want to spend all your labor then get all your awakening scrolls and stuff and then not be able to actually upgrade your gear and be sat waiting until the next day to do so So the next thing to talk about is going to be the combat. Now this is something that didn't really confuse me too much so hopefully you guys are finding it quite simple as well. However there is a lot of abilities, a lot of classes and a lot of customization. However you could go and ask someone what's the best sort of min maxing for damage and whatever class you want to do, healing or tank or melee whatever. But I mean if you want to really just have fun then just make the class that you want that you think is cool so look at all the skill trees and think oh yeah that looks like i could enjoy that and that might go well with this and just put it together like that you'll find that most classes do seem to go pretty well anyway and in my opinion i would probably say to you guys that having fun with the class that you've built is probably going to be a lot more important than having the most available dps whatsoever i'm sure plenty of you guys don't agree with that and just think no i need to be able to do the most dps or i need to be the best healer but do what's going to be fun and you know go wherever however you feel down that road but what i wanted to talk about was the only thing that really confused me in combat was finding out what abilities combo together now what you can do actually is while you're leveling up you are going to unlock skill points on certain levels and it will notify you when you get these skill points so with that you press k and it'll bring up your skills window you'll see all of the skill trees that you have chosen you should have three unless you are quite early on in which case you will unlock these further on as you level up but like i say once you've got your skill points you're going to want to sort of think what is the next ability that's going to suit me best and what's going to combo well with the abilities i've got now this is a question you probably should ask yourself every time you pick an ability now if you want you can go and ask someone what abilities you should be getting like i say but if you are wanting to just sort of build this character yourself just look when you put your mouse over certain abilities it will tell you what it combos with at the bottom and it'll tell you for example if someone is slowed then this ability will trip them up or if someone is slowed then this ability might stun them or it might make them staggered or something like that now these abilities are going to be useful especially in pvp for example if you have an ability that can slow someone down and then trip them up being able to cc people in pvp is absolutely massive so definitely take some time to look through your abilities and just sort of see what combos with which if you look on the screen you can actually click on the button here that lets you go in and sort of change all the skill trees around and then if you click on one of the abilities it will highlight and show all of the abilities that combo with it obviously you'll still have to read what the combos do and do a little bit of reading into it but it's definitely worth it and this is really the only confusing bit that i found when sort of trying to slot abilities other than that all you're going to want to do is consider what abilities are going to help you out and if you feel like your class is lacking something for example in pvp i couldn't catch up with anyone with my class so i got a teleport and i got a lasso to pull someone back to me so just look at what your character needs and then try and sort of fill in that gap and also combo abilities at the same time like i say i'm not claiming to be an absolute pro at combat these are just things that i've learned along the way obviously i don't want to sort of give you false information and say oh get this get that always do this because i'm not 100 percent on things like that i'm still learning this game as well so if you are looking to min max and get the best out of everything possible from your class then do ask a pro player that does know someone who's been spending a lot of time maybe just go on twitch find a good streamer and ask them they're usually very interested in helping you out and it's definitely something that you do have the option to do
just a little shout out here. Um, I actually have been watching someone called Megadeth on Twitch and he is incredibly helpful. He has spent quite a lot of time answering questions for me and stuff. So if you are looking for someone interesting and funny and helpful to help you out while you are playing arcades, then this guy is definitely worth your time. So the next thing that I want to talk about, seeing as we've just spoken about combat, is where you would find your battle pets. So these are quests that you're going to want to do probably before level 30 as well, just sort of how I mentioned about getting your mount and getting your glider. Basically you are going to have two options and this is going to be the Sabre Fang if you are on the Harani race or it is going to be the Wolfhound if you're on the Nuian race. You can get the other factions one, but you will have to go to their area and buy it from the person who sells it there. Obviously this means you're going to have to go onto the other continent and get past people trying to kill you. And you know, if you want that pet, then by all means go and do it. You'll probably be able to do it. But for the Nuian Alliance, it is the Wolfhound. And for the Harani, then it is going to be the Saber Fang. So I will just show you where to get these on the maps for each zone just in case you've missed them and they're definitely something that you're going to want to go back and get. So to get the Wolfhound then you are going to want to go to Marionopol. I do apologise for any names that I may pronounce wrong but Marionopol is the zone that you're going to want to go to and then you're going to want to go to the little town called Dawn Silver and there you'll be able to buy the Wolfhound for 10 silver from that vendor or if you are on the Nui Alliance then you will be able to do the quest to get that for free. If you are wanting to get the Sabre Fang from the Haranya Alliance, then you are going to want to go over to Villanelle, and this is going to be in Juan's Ranch. Now, when you get there, all you're going to want to do again is buy it from the vendor, or if you are from the Haranya race, then you can actually just do the quest and get it for free if you have missed it so far. Gearing up in our cage can be pretty confusing, especially for a completely brand new player. So. Basically, all you're going to have to worry about is when you start Arcade Unchained and you start your main quest line, you're going to be given an option as a reward whether you want plate armor, leather armor, or cloth armor. Now, obviously, you can change this down the line, but just to sort of like a baseline, people who are playing melee and tanks are probably going to want to do plate armor as this will give you high defense. If you are playing a mage or a healer, then you might want to do cloth armor. And if you are doing a DPS class, say like an archer, a ranger or magic or anything like that that does just DPS and you want critical damage, then you're going to want to get leather armor. You can pick different ones and I'm sure there'll be plenty of different options that might be better than that. So maybe just do a bit of research into it, ask some streamers who know what they're talking about a little bit more than I do and find out what's going to be perfect for your class. As for your weapons, you are going to get the option to have a dual wheel setup or a two handed setup. Now it is easier to upgrade gear with a two handed weapon, this way you only have to upgrade one item rather than the two. But I do believe you get a little bit more DPS doing dual wield as the attack speed's a little bit quicker but it all depends on your class. So for someone who is wanting to do a tank, then you're probably going to want to get a sword and a shield. That way you've got your extra defensives from your shield. For someone who wants to do range, a scepter and an offhand dagger or sword will probably be your way to go. And if you are wanting to be a mage, then a staff is probably going to be the best way to go. Like I say, put a bit more research into this. I don't want to go on a full rant about what gear to actually select. I'm talking more about upgrading it and how that works. So if you are looking specifically on what you should be picking, then maybe ask someone again like a streamer or maybe do a little bit of a Google research on it. It shouldn't be too difficult to find something on that. So the gear that you get from the quest is going to be called Explorer's Gear or Explorer's Play or Explorer's Leather, things like that. And this is the gear that you're going to want to keep all the way until you upgrade it to the Harani gear. It does go from the Adventurers one to the Harani one, which is the best gear you're going to be able to get. So what you're going to want to do is as you hand in the main quest storyline quests, then you will get as a reward some synthesis materials. You will also receive awakening scrolls from this quest line as well. Usually you'll get your synthesis materials first and then awakening scrolls afterwards as that's the order that you're going to be using them in anyway. So, once you've got your synthesis materials, you can take gear off of what you've got equipped. Make sure it is your explorer's stuff, other gear will not be able to be upgraded this way. What you're going to want to do is in your inventory, click on gear upgrade, and then go to the synthesis tab. Put the gear that you want to upgrade in here, and then auto list the synthesis into this window. This is going to cost you labor and gold to do, so just keep that in mind if you're running low on labor or gold. And then you're going to Confirm this and then it will give you back a upgraded version of the item that you put in there. Now, once you've 
synthesize the item, it will need to be awakened to bring the grade of the item back down so it can be upgraded again. But don't worry, the equipment points and the stats on this will still be improved and not sort of brought back down to how they used to be. So basically, you're going to get your gear, you're going to use your synthesis materials on the gear to upgrade that to the highest rank available, and then you're going to awaken the gear to bring the grade back down, but keeping the equipment points as they are. And then once it's been awakened, it will then allow you to get more synthesis materials and upgrade it even further. Once you've done this past rank 3, you'll notice this on Awakening Scrolls. It will say Awakening Scroll rank 1, 2 and 3. Then it will be awakened into Harani gear, which is the high level gear that there is to get. But I'm not going to go too much over all of that because by that point, hopefully you will have learned a little bit more on how to upgrade all of your gear. As you are leveling up from 1 till 30, you probably would have noticed people talking about getting a farm and what they are doing with the farm. And you probably heard about the land rush as you were sort of getting into the game. And you've probably seen player-owned houses around anyway. The farm is a very important part of your journey, really. And you are going to want to pick this up probably once you hit level 30. That way, you can start spending a bit more labour on things that make a little bit more sense to the goals that you've set yourself. To get the Scarecrow farm, you are going to want to go to Halcyona at level 30. This will unlock the Blue Salt Brotherhood questline. You'll see this as a green leaf above an NPC's head. You'll also see it on the map as a green leaf as well. So you want to start this questline and do the quest that it tells you to do, which will take you from one side of Halcyona to the other. And then once you get to the end of that sort of intro to it, you will be rewarded with your Scarecrow Garden. Once you've got this, you're probably going to want to go and do a little bit of adventuring or exploring around to find some land that's actually still free for you to place this down. As a lot of people have taken up the land and the player on house places that you are able to actually place these down. But look on the map, the world map, and you'll see in each of the zones that you will have a little house icon on there somewhere and you will notice that this is the player owned house area that you are allowed to build in there is certain places on the map that aren't marked but they're probably all full up by now anyway so what you could do is ask in the nation chat if there's anywhere that's still got a quite a bit of space free and they will probably inform you where to look anyway once you've found a nice home to settle down in and you've put your scarecrow garden down you will notice that you get a small area that you can now plant stuff in. So if you head back to anywhere with vendors really, there should be something nearby where you've got your housing that you can go. And you should be able to buy things like seeds, saplings and livestock, all that sort of stuff that you can put onto your farm. Now what I would recommend you start planting probably straight away and you've probably noticed that everyone else is planting the same thing is the cedar saplings. Now this is a tall tree, an evergreen tree by the look of it and this is going to give you quite a lot of lumber. Lumber is incredibly important for crafting things like your ships or your farm carts that you do trading with and also if you plant these trees you do get a chance at getting some thunderstruck logs. It is quite rare but if you do get it then this will give you quite a bit of gold injection and also you're going to need it to make things like your farm cart as well. So it is incredibly useful to start planting these straight away and sort of keeping on top of them, cutting them down and replanting them and this way you do sort of give yourself an advantage when you do come to needing a lot of labour and your thunderstruck log. As you are on your adventure, you've probably noticed a world gate that says Mirage Isles on it. You may have jumped through it and thought, what the hell is this? Or you may have just wondered about it and not too sure about it whatsoever. But Mirage Isles is basically a place where you take all of your Gilder Stars and you spend it on designs and you can use those designs to make things for your character. So for example, if you are wanting to get a house, you can go to Mirage Isles, spend some Gilder Stars on a design for a house, take that design out to the player owned house areas and then you can put down your sort of plan for your house then you'll still need to bring the materials to build up your house to your plot of land and that way you can build up yourself a player owned house now mirage isles also gives you access to different gliders different sort of mounts and all that sort of stuff so you're going to be able to upgrade your glider with gilder stars you're going to be able to get a design for your ship here you're going to be able to get farm carts farm wagons all that sort of stuff and that's where gilder sort of comes into play in the mirage isles everything costs gilder you spend it here you get designs which you can then take out and upgrade into the actual item of the thing that you've bought a design for so if you are wondering how do i get a ship you're going to want to come to the mirage isles go to the section that sells ships Look at the designs of the ships that you're going to want to buy and it will show you how much Gilder Stars it does cost. Buy that design, take the design out, have a look on it, what it tells you you need to actually construct the ship and then go and construct it from there on. 
This applies to pretty much everything else as well. Houses, gliders, wagons, all that sort of stuff. You get the design from Mirage Isles and then you take that design and you finish it off using your proficiencies and the materials that you've either gathered or bought from the auction house. The last thing that I wanted to talk about as a tip for beginners, something that's quite confusing, was the folio. Knowing how and what you need to actually craft certain items, and this is all literally found in here. And once you understand how it works, it does make it quite simple. It's still a lot to go into it, but once you know how the folio works, which is really important, then it does help you out on understanding what you need and what you need to do to actually make an item. So. The folio you can access by pressing O on your keyboard, that will open this up and then once you have done that you can then find an item that you wanted to make. For example, if I type in here a novice fishing rod then you're going to be able to see everything that you need to make that fishing rod. So it, whatever you are looking to make you type it in the top here and it will give you the, the suggestion for what it is. Click on that and then find the actual item that you want to be making and then it will show you everything you need to make it. As you can see for the fishing rod, all the different bits that I do need to make this novice fishing rod is all here at the bottom. But if I then click on another part of this, so click on the fishing wire, it will then show me everything I need to make the fishing wire for this. So you can just follow this through and then eventually you're going to be able to have all of the different bits that you do need. So no matter what you want to craft, it's all going to be on here, including things like trade packs, your farm carts, Anything to do with basic materials, making iron ingots is going to tell you how many ores you need and it'll tell you how much labor it costs and all that sort of good stuff. So this is really important to understand. The folio will literally help you understand how to make anything and it'll just sort of make life a lot easier once you understand how the folio works. At first, I looked at this and thought, what the hell is this? I don't understand what this is and I ignored it off. I didn't even think about it until later on once I really just had to sort of look into it. But for you guys, if this looks really confusing, like I say, it's basically just search the item that you want, it'll show you what you need. If one of the things that you need is something that you don't really know how to make either, then click on that and it'll show you how to make that item as well. So basically just build your way up to actually getting the items that you do need and then you can craft the item that you are wanting to make. I know this is quite confusing still, so if you do have any questions, just drop them in the comments and I'll do my best to sort of answer them and help you out on this subject. So that pretty much covers everything that I wanted to talk about in this video. As I was leveling up, there was a lot that confused me and I do hope this video has sort of helped out on any sort of confusion that you may have while leveling up as well. Especially if you are just right now getting into the game and you are confused by a hell of a lot. I do understand that that is a thing. I still have a hell of a lot to learn as well and once I do learn about all those sort of things, I'm sure I'll make another video and try and answer as many more questions as I can as well. So. If you enjoyed this video guys make sure you let me know in the comments and if you have any questions I'd be happy to help out and answer as best I possibly can. If you did enjoy make sure you like and subscribe and I am going to be making quite a lot more arcade content so hopefully you guys will stick around for that as well. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one. See you later guys. Bye.